Good day and welcome to this week's edition of Tourismus Namibia. My name is Frank Steffen. I'm the editor of the German Allgemeine Zeitung and obviously responsible for Tourismus Namibia. Um, today, once again, we bring you topics and then we'll speak about a couple of destinations and also have a look uh, at, uh, at another interesting item under To The Point. But first up, we've got topics and uh, in, in that respect, we'll first look at Swakopmund. Swakopmund, the coastal town of Namibia that has turned 130 years old this week. And then thereafter, we go to the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform. The minister has been visiting the uh, northeast of Namibia, having a look at illegal fences. Thereafter, we have a quick look at in situ leaching, that uh, mining process they want to apply in the Kalahari aquifer. And from there, we'll have a look at a lion nest that was caught up in a snare or wire or something up in the north. And then last but not least, we'll also have a look at the eland who somehow uh, did not uh, budge when elephants tried to sh shoo him away. So quite an interesting thingy there. So those are our topics. Then we've got destinations, Kwesi Dunes Lodge, uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, lodge down in the southwest of uh, Namibia in the Namib Desert. So we'll have a look at that one. And then thereafter, we'll turn towards Route 38 which is in the northwest, uh, that is in Uchu, uh, quite a nice little place that we want to present to you there. And then last but not least, uh, to the point, we'll turn to an interesting movie called Fire of Love, which I uh, picked up this week and I thought I'd uh, share the trailer of the movie with you because it seems to me it's something that we shouldn't miss. Yeah, so an interesting show, quite a lot of topics uh, today. And because we're talking of topics, up next we go to topics. Right, welcome back. And like I said, first up our topics, uh, Swakopmund, which, is, uh, which has turned 130 years old this week. And uh, up first, we've got a little video for you because uh, Maya Polina Ndahafa Nashilundu and the Irongo governor, Neville Andre Itope, they uh, started these, the, a month of festi festivities. And uh, thereafter, we also bring you a, a little light show to have a look at these videos. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Swako, happy birthday Swako. I think I have it still, thank you very much. <laughs> and then I want to see the smile. No. We celebrate what we as people of Swakopmund did to this town. We look after our town. We are working together as people of Swakopmund. Many people are very happy to come to Swakopmund because of how we are hospitable to them, how we are so friendly to them. And I just want to tell you that the visitors are happy with you. Please keep on being a good host to our uh, visitors and make our town <laughs> make our town to grow bigger and better for more 130 years. We are doing good. Keep on doing that. It is because of the management of those that are in the municipality. It's because of the leadership of those that are in the position. It is because of the ordinary people 
that we see in our streets that are working together and are uh, showing the smile, the beauty, and the happiness of us and the proudness of us being people of Swakopmund. Other towns can emulate a lot from what we are doing here in Swakopmund. We, we showcase our culture, the different cultures that we have. Many people from different uh, walks of life are coming to Swakopmund. They end up becoming the residents of Swakopmund. It is because of us people of Swakopmund. And today I just want to say thank you, keep on doing what you are doing as people of Swakopmund. The people are proud of you and we have to work together to make this town the city of Namibia. Right, and that was uh, Swakop for you. Swakop uh, spending a whole month of festivities now. You know, there's a full program. If you go and uh, onto the uh, website, Swakop Munt, you can actually find a full program. So it's quite busy there. We of the Allgemeine Zeitung, for example, uh, dish out a program each morning saying what's to be expected next. But anyways, then we turn towards uh, Minister Kalle Schlettwein. He's the Minister of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform. And he visited the northeast of Namibia. He went to Zambezi and Kavango regions basically to look at the green schemes, picked up a lot of confrontation with the governors there who feel left out after um, it's been in the news for at least a year now that the green schemes will be uh, contracted out to third parties simply because uh, the green schemes have not worked out the way that they should. But in the process, the minister also had a look at illegal fences which have been erected in the sun area. Now you might wonder how does that reflect on, on the tourism show? Quite easy. Um, the sun people have actually been awarded quite a huge tract of land there and the idea was that on some of these uh, well, parts of these lands, they do farming and on others they promote tourism, sustainable tourism through hunting and all types of things. Um, and now they suddenly feel that they, <laughs> they discard it or they actually have been pushed out by the farmers. But have a look at the video, the minister had something to say. Yes, Minister, just tell us what you have seen at the, this particular farm. Uh, perhaps what could be the interventions collectively from all the involved uh, ministries. Yeah. One matter that was raised raised um, in the Kavangu East and West um, region. It is a very serious matter, but as I said, the whole issue of illegal fencing and displacing people from either the commonage or a resettlement farm that was given to them is a serious illegal activity that needs to be addressed with all seriousness and we are determined to do that now. We have the legal tools to remove these fences and even charge these people that illegally erect them and make sure that the policies of government that are aimed at assisting those that are vulnerable are taking effect and reach the necessary target group. It's a an, it's an problem not only in the two Kavango regions, it's a problem we face in many regions where um, people move in and through illegitimate ways get access to the land without proper leaseholds agreement, without the authority of the traditional authorities, without the involvement of the land boards. And it's the whole series of events that need to be cleaned up and um, we've looked at so that our resettlement programs go back to what they were supposed to do, resettle people that have no means to make a living and give them that means to make a living.
You know, what drives me crazy about this thing is that time and again we see, here's a minister who's saying, look, this is not right here. Uh, these fences have to go. And on the other hand, we've, we've got time and again deputy ministers and uh, high up people like that who erect these uh, fences. In fact, the, the person responsible for uh, safety and security, uh, who's the deputy minister who's responsible for police, actually has one of these farms there. So now you sit with the police having to go to their boss and say, listen, you've got to move. It will never happen. So if nothing is done from right on top by the government itself, this will be a recurring problem because this is not the first time and this has been going on for years. And every now and again, the whole story starts anew. Anyway, so up next we've got in situ leaching and I've brought you a little video just to illustrate what we're saying. Um, it, it sort of can run in the background while it works there. Um, but the idea is it, always that uh, in, in situ leaching is all about have, finding an, an ore body with uranium, uh, like the one indicated there in green, and it's invariably trapped between two impervious layers of bedrock or, or ground layers, whatever you want to call them. And then in Namibia, the problem is uh, the uranium is in fact stored in the water, in the, in the aquifer itself. And uh, this aquifer is connected to other aquifers at different levels. And this is according to Dr. Roy Muller, and he's a, ge a geologist, and he explained it to me a number of times. So contrary to what you see here, here it's not a case of trying to dilute the uranium, pump it out and get it in for production. In Namibia, the, the, the darker blue up the aquifer is where you find that green uranium deposit. And so they want to push in uh, uh, the sulfuric acid into that freshwater uh, reservoir and then pull it out in the middle, exactly as you see here on the illustration. But the difference is obviously that our system won't allow it to all get out because some, they reckon between 10 and 20% uh, of that uh, a solution remains in the fresh water. And our aquifer doesn't only serve Namibia, it serves Botswana, it goes right down into the Kalahari towards South Africa. So there is a real problem there. And um, so I, I thought I'd bring this one just to, to make you understand that it's not quite as easy as it is illustrated on this video because uh, you will not be able to get the water back into its quality or standard of quality that it had before. And um, in the meantime, you see that the uh, um, Headspring investment is already uh, starting to drill holes in the Amanus uh, Reserve, which is where the Herero people have their homes. And I don't quite think that our government is taking this whole issue serious enough. That, that's my personal opinion about this. Right, and then up next we have quite a nice little story. If you look at these pictures here of this lioness, uh, the Ministry of Environment uh, and Forestry and Tourism uh, recently released uh, uh, this lioness from a wire snare around her groin. And the lioness was spotted by a tour guide in the Buffalo Core area, which is part of the Boabwata National Park. Uh, that's as you leave the Namibian major part in Kavango and go towards the Zambezi region. He sub uh, subsequently was reported that the ministry had uh, sent out a team to free the lioness from the snare. Uh, snares are nothing unusual in the park, as communities often graze their cattle there and then obviously go on a little private hunting spree. Um, but uh, this was nice to see that they were able to actually assist that lioness and she seems to be well. She was actually quite dehydrated uh, when they uh, found her, so it was good news to see that they were actually able to, to assist the little old girl there. Um, up next, a very interesting video that I've been holding on to for a while now, but I decided it's now never, you've got to see this. It's simply too nice. It's an Eland who simply decided that no elephant will tell him where to drink. Have a look. Yeah, 
what they said, the same thing with the trumpet. Uh-huh. Happy Bubu Zelo. Hi. <laughs> Well, he certainly had uh, nerves of steel there. Um, but anyways, I thought it was quite a nice uh, video to share. Probably some of you have seen it before, but it still remains worthwhile having a look at. Up next, we go to destinations. Yeah, the, the up next we've got destinations, as said, and the first one we're looking at is Cressy Dunes Lodge. Now, Cressy Dunes Lodge, if you look at the map here, um, this is uh, on the left-hand side is Sossus Flay. So it's, uh, it's the more inside road uh, leading down uh, to, to the Nama Brand Nature Reserve. And right at the bottom there you can see Cressy Dunes Lodge, or where it's found. If we look at the next map, you can have uh, you can see it more clearly. It's just across from the Nubib Mountains, um, Nubib Berge, uh, obviously in German, and uh, it's right next to the Dune Belt uh, as you go into the Namib on the left hand side. So I actually brought you a third picture here. You can see it's like smack in the middle. You can hardly discern the, the road that leads up to the, the lodge. So very nicely placed and uh, deep within the Namibia's impressive uh, Nama brand nature reserve, as you can see there. A vast desert wilderness covering more than 200,000 hectares. And uh, so this is a location where time seems to stop, they say, and the space seems endless with its undulating desert plains, backdrop of rugged mountains and famous red dunes. 12 air-conditioned cozy cabins with canvas walls and thatched roofs are available at Cressy Dunes and each bedroom features a separate stargazer area that is totally exposed to the sky and the ideal place to observe what they call the cosmic theater performance above you. So um, uh, Tourismus Namibia spoke to David Cooper. Um, he's the senior uh, field guide and in Jarina Esme, the manager of the lodge, and they share, shared more information about the Kwesi Dunes Lodge. Have a look at the video. If you come to South, if you come to Kwesi Dunes Lodge, then you come into an area with the best night skies. So in the rooms, there's an area that is structured with a bed that you can overnight watching the beautiful night sky ever on the globe. Cressy Dunes is located deep in Namibia's striking Namib Rand Nature Reserve, a vast desert wilderness of over 200,000 hectares, with its rolling desert plains and backdrop of craggy mountains in iconic red dunes. This is a place where time seems to stand still and the space is never ending. Here, it's not about the chasing big game, but rather soaking up the beauty of the colorful landscape admiring the antelope that scatter the sand and gazing at the stars that light up the night sky. At Cressy Dunes, you'll find 12 cool and comfortable air-conditioned chalets, all chalets with all, all with canvas walls and tattered roofs. Each bedroom has a separate stargazer room completely open to the sky and the perfect spot from which to watch the celestial theater show above. Views from the rooms, the main area and the swimming pool are of the vast desert vistas 
and when you can bear to tear your eyes away, enjoy quad biking, scenic drives and walks, hot air ballooning, helicopter flights, horse riding and day trips to Saucers Fair. At Cressy Lodge, we're bringing a touch of natural selection character to the Namib Desert and Cressy Dunes, which will feature our usual cool and comfortable style with a few quirks along the way. In the bedrooms, you can expect vintage four-poster beds, striped canvas walls, and a separate stargazer room that's, supposed, that's completely open to the sky for maximum galaxy gazing as you fall asleep. Each bedroom also has an in-suite bathroom with both indoor and outdoor showers in a shaded outdoor veranda. High-attached roofs will keep you cool during the hot desert days and nights and you'll be pleased to hear that the bedrooms are air-conditioned too. The view from the lodge is spectacular and the glass windows and doors at the main area look out onto the udulating sand that only ends when it meets the mountains. Far in the distance, inside there's a well-stocked bar, library area and several seating and dining areas. When the sun rises in the morning, head to the campfire for morning cuppa, whilst in the heat of the day, the swimming pool is the only place to be. Quesi Dunes is open all year round. The hyper-arid desert terrain is amazing in all seasons and the air conditions room will always keep you cool. But the winter and summer months offer different experiences in terms of activities and weather. April to October is Namibia's dry winter season. Temperatures are pleasant during the day but it can get cold in the early mornings and evenings nothing a good jumper and jacket can handle this is the time of the year to witness the desert in its iconic dry state and capture the now famous photos of the inky trees silhouetted against the blood red dunes and the gray mountains shimmering in the background in November, the temperatures start to heat up and at the beginning of the year, in particular, you can witness incredible thunder and lightning storms made even more dramatic by the striking, by the striking terrain. This is an excellent time of the year to spot some of the migratory birds that arrive in the desert. You might not find the big five wandering around the harsh desert of the Namib Rand, but the dunes are home to a variety of wildlife that has adapted in many fascinating ways in order to survive. Take for example the Hemsbok with their white bellies that reflect the heat of the sand and their sophisticated vascular system that cools the blood around the brain. Or the bat-eared fox, those giant ears aren't just for comic value but help to amplify the sound of their predators approaching. What you'll undoubt, undoubtedly see most are antelope. From Hemsbok to Springbok, Kudu to Stienbok, they can be found in most corners of the reserve. Silhouetted against the red sand, you may also spot Birchall zebra amid the dunes as well as the more unusual black backed jackals, art wolves and African wildcats which can be surprisingly easy to find compared to other reserves on the continent. Leopard and cheetah are rare but there are small numbers of both. As our portfolio of camps develops, develops in new areas we will be forming partnerships with different con conservation programs and projects. We ensure that 1.5% of your stay in our lodges goes to wildlife conservation in the projects we support. In our first year of operation, we are delighted to say that this amounted to over 40% of our total profit. We are proud to be part of Africa's conservation solution and believe that by simply visiting a wildlife area, travelers are encouraging its continued prote protection through tourism re revenue, particularly in places like the Namib Rand Reserve. At more than 200,000 hectares in size, the Namib 
Rand Nature Reserve is one of the largest private reserves in Southern Africa. It was established in the 1980s when Albi Bregner integrated several livestock farms into a protected wilderness area and today it's a model of conservation success. There are strict rules about the number of lodges built in the area, making it a totally private and entirely exclusive adventure. Photographs may show the craggy Moev Mountains of the Nababrand, the infamous red dunes and the enormous watch swathers of desert, but nothing prepares you for the moment you see it yourself. The space is humbling, the sense of peace is spiritual, and it's one of the most striking stirring places out there. The fairy circles that dot ground are particularly intriguing. Over the years, the theories behind them have been hotly debated. However, no one really knows for certain why they are here. Just another reason to visit this extraordinary place. Do make sure to visit our website to see our special offers which are designed to help you experience everything Southern Africa has to offer whilst also saving some all important pennies. Whether you're about to embark on a once in a lifetime solo trip or are celebrating a special occasion, have a peek at our offers and see what you can what you could be in store for what could be in store for you. Yeah, and that was Cressy Dunes launch. Um, up next, we've got uh, another interesting part. Um, I think it might be new owners, in fact, Route 38. That uh, here you can see Uchu, um, and I've indicated which road leads from where Ochivarongo coming in from the bottom. Uh, that would be the normal road everybody takes on the right hand side. You can see the uh, the sand road or gravel road that leads to Otavi, whereas on the left that's a tar road over to Korichas. And the normal route that everybody would follow is as you go through Uchu, uh, you would go up to Etosha. But if we look at the next map, you can see there Route 38. Um, on the right you see the yellow main road leading into, the, into town and as you would turn towards your left up going through the town uh, on towards Etosha you might consider to actually stay overnight at Route 38, which is a, depending on where you came from or where you're going, would be a nice little uh, stopover. Many people know this building in Namibia, it's well known. Uh, it's clearly been repainted and the blue roof was quite clearly discernible on the, on the uh, uh, map that I uh, pulled out of Google Earth, Google Earth yeah, the program, and you can clearly see um, these are the contact details, so if you want to pause the button there, then uh, you will see where in Uchi you will find it, like I indicated there before. Like I said, it's a nice little stopover. They've got a little cafe here. Um, uh, people from Uchi know it quite well. This whole thing has been, has been going for many years now, and uh, clearly it's just uh, new owners, new people, doing uh, their thing there now. It's a, it's a bit different from what it was, but um, I'm quite sure it's still as cozy as it was before, because if you look at the rooms nicely and well done, um, and there's a little backyard in the back. I've, I've, been, uh, I've stayed there before, and you can clearly see it's, it's sort of this old retro style to some extent, but uh, clearly very nice to, to, to go to. Um, these are obviously just photos, just to give you an idea of what it's all about. Um, nothing wrong there, but we've also got a video and an interview for you, so have a look at it. Goeiedag. Ons kan hier vandag bykie in Oudtjoe, by Route 38. Ek is Jenny van Rensberg, die nieuwe eienaar van um, Route 38. Ons is betrokken in die Oudtjoe gemeenskap al vir so 12, 13 jaar met kinders in privaatschool Moria. Um, ons is eindelijk woonachtig op een plaas na by Omaruru en in die toerisme bedrijf. So ons het hierdie as een baie groot geleentheid gekry wat oor, oor ons pad gekom het om um, hierdie nieuwe restaurant en accommodatie te begin omdat ons reeds vir 22 jaar in die toerisme bedrijf is, is dit vir my een great, een groot nieuwe uitdaging wat my pad gekrys het. En um, ons hele doel wat 
van hierdie plek is, is dat onze blessing vir enige een sal wees, wat oudjou kom besoek, oudjou inwoners, wat sommer net bykie uit hulle huise uit wil kom, en um, by ons ietsie wil kom eet, by ons ietsie wil kom drink, uh, roet dit die uit, sy oorspronkelijke gedachte, kom van, um, ons is so ideaal gelee, ons is in die hoofstraat van Otjou, so dis op die 738 van, van Otjou Warungu na Itosha, so as jy dier Otjou rai, gaan jy ons nie kan mis nie, dis een groot dubbel verdieping gebou, um, in die onderste verdieping het ons een restaurant begin, en ons doen ook een padstel, so um, dis opwindend vir Otjou, Um, ons bied plaaslike producte aan, ons bied geskenke aan, dit is ingelegge bottel, enige iets waarin jy kan denk, vars producte, ons wil een mark skep vir ons plaaslike mense wat dan ook dit kan verkoop aan iemand wat inkom en iets speciaals kom soek. So dit is deel van die padstel, dan uh, het ek 6 gastekamers, um, soos wat die Engelsman sal sê, a real farm style accommodation. Um, dit is... Hmm. <laughs> Oké, okay, um, die kamers is 6 gastekamers wat in een plaas stijl gedecoreerd is, met elkeen een answeet badkamer, groot ruimkamers, ek het Um, enkelkamers, ek het dubbelkamers, ek het familiekamers, so as jy dier oudje moet rui en jy soek lekker gerieflike accommodatie, dan is ons die rechte plek waar jy kan kom oornag. Hier baie goeie kokke, um, ek het vijf meisies wat vir my um, kelners is, en dan het ek twee meisies wat verantwoordelik is vir die gastekamers. So daardoor, denk ek, skep ons ook werk in ons klein gemeenskapie en ek het rechtig die um, indringendheid daarvan ook beleef met COVID en hoe hierdie opgeleide, gekwalificeerde mense eindelijk nou vir twee of drie jaar sonder werk gesit het. Um, so ek voel bevoorig dat hulle deel van ons span kan wees. Dan is ek opgewonde om met julle te kan deel dat ek dink my julle gedachte en my julle droom oor Ruth City uit is om anders te wees. Um, ek wil graag een product aanbied wat jy nie in enige plek in Namibie gaan kry nie. My spijskaart is baie uniek, baie speciaal. Um, deel van my julle prentjie is toerisme, nie net buitenlanders nie, maar ook plaaslik. As jy inkom by Ruth City uit, dan moet jy kan beleef dat jy iets van, van Namibie hier by ons kan kry. Um, my gerechte op my spijskaart is gespecificeer as toeriste aantrekkelijkhede. Elkeen het een unieke naam, byvoorbeeld een palmwag ontbijt, of jy eet een vingerklip ontbijt, of jy um, eet een dorreskrater, middag eet een, en um, iets baie speciaal ook op die spijskaart, is dat ons elke ochend vars roosterkoeke bak, ons maak lekker vroeg in die ochend te vierkie, en dan bak ons ons, of maak ons eie roosterbrode, so dit is rechtig iets en niks, wat jy net by Ruth City uit en oud toe gaan kom kry. Right, and that was Route 38, uh, something different. Uh, as you go up to Etosha, or for that matter, maybe just go up to Kaoka land, well, Damara land, all those areas. Um, Uchu is sort of the center from where you would go out to these other areas next. But those are our destinations for today. Up next, we've got to the point.
Yeah, and the, to the point, I wanted to bring you something different today. And uh, so I followed the CNN news channel the other day, and, and then I stumbled across quite a long interview, which they had uh, with a producer of a movie. And uh, now it's obviously up to you to look up the, movie, uh, the, the, the detailed um, interview after the show, if you're interested, after the, having watched what I'll show you just now. Um, for now, I would like to simply introduce you to the trailer of what is called the National Geographic documentary film. Um, the title of the film is uh, Fire of Love, uh, which introduces you to the extraordinary love story uh, of intrepid uh, French scientists Katia and uh, Maurice Kraft, uh, who died just as explosively, as they put it, as they lived capturing the most spectacular Im imagery ever recorded of their greatest passion, which was volcanoes. Have a look. This is Katya, and this is Maurice. <laughs> Tomorrow will be their last day. They will leave behind hundreds of hours of footage, thousands of photos, and a million questions. Alone, they could only dream of volcanoes. Together, they can reach them. They meet on a blind date at a cafe. From here on out, life will only be volcanoes, volcanoes, volcanoes. C'est très dur de volcanologues qui vivent ensemble parce que c'est très volcanique donc franchement ça fait des éruptions très souvent. <laughs> For Katia and Maurice, the unknown is not something to be feared. It is something to go toward. Moi j'aime bien qu'il par... qu marche devant moi. Je me dis si lui aussi va se tuer, je préfère être avec lui donc. Normalement, je l'ai réussi mieux que ça, franchement. Hein. Volcan, c'est le plus beau, mais ça tue. Un de mes rêves, c'est que les volcans ne tuent plus. Katia et Maurice insisted that this type of close-up study had to be done. Me fait remarquer que nous sommes fous de rester là. Et pourtant, nous restons. In this world lived a fire, and in this fire, two lovers found a home. Right, and that was uh, Fire of Love. Um, I, I, for my part, uh, the, the movie has been out since June already, but um, they had, like I said, quite an interesting discussion about it. If you Google it, you will find it quite easily because that's where I also found this trailer. And um, I'm quite sure some of you would want to have a look at it now. So that was under To The Point, something different for today. And uh, it brings us to the end of this show. I hope you enjoyed what I brought you. And, um, Otherwise, we'll still see each other in a week's time with other um, topics again, new destinations, and obviously something to the point again. Until then, I remain. You look after yourself, and hopefully you've still got a good weekend ahead of you. Until then, bye.